let's, let's talk about closing costs, right? Um, something that I know is pretty common is that a lot of people who are new to selling um, and or new to buying, right? Um, in some cases, it's both. If you're selling your starter home for the first time, you've never been through the selling process, there's a lot of cloudiness or ambiguity around who's responsible for closing costs. Already, good morning, Robert Murillo with Compass Florida, license number BK33735443. You are now tuned in to the DM. Florida Good morning, State. Good morning John Sepulveda, MLS 1309244, four, coming at you live this morning. Good to be here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Episode 18. 18. Happy hump day. Woo. Hump day. <laughs> What's going on, John? Talk to me. Uh, just waiting for PCI report to come out today. Mm-hmm. Um, you know data let me re recap uh, for those who don't know what does pci stand for price consumer index the price consumer and index, price and consumer what, what index. That index measure it is a an inflation uh report mm -hmm. that is that is one of the favorite sort of items for the fed to look at uh, okay. when they're making their policies decisions um and there's two sort of components to the report they have the headline report mm -hmm. and then they have the core number and the core number is they strip out uh, housing and energy costs so okay. they, they leave all the other you know uh, pricing you know numbers the values but they take out uh housing and, and energy um, and that gives them a number and that's the core number is sort of what the fed focuses more on so okay. the expected number today is the uh, headline number, the inf and this is inflation. This what measures what this measures is inflation. Mm -hmm. um, so the headline, the expected number is to fall from uh, six percent to five point two percent. Okay. Um, and the uh, and on the core right, which is minus energy and housing, they're expecting the market is expecting that number to increase to. Uh, five from 5.5 to 5.6 okay that's what i was kind of talking about yesterday because the 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 numbers it's the number last year plus they add the housing and but the number the starting number from last year was really low so mm -hmm. with the housing pressure and you know housing and and job data and energy costs kind of rising it's the 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 chart in this month is not particularly uh optimal for any major change right so it really depends on as you can see like the headline is, has one number going down the core has another number going slightly up yeah so, so is that is that slightly up that point one point significant at all no if it if it comes in and there it should be okay if it comes in at 5.6, it should be okay. If it come, you know, it's kind it, of like it, things are just going to stay. They're because the they're there are they're messy, so they're going to be bouncing between those you know the sideways. It's not really going up or down. The market just kind of going sideways. So it depends what you know, and who knows what the market's going to look at. They're going to look at the 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 headline number, which is going to say it, it, you know inflation's going down, still mm -hmm. high, but it's going down. Or they're going to look at the core, which says well still going slightly up either way right so if they look at the number as okay the headline is going slightly down uh the market may say okay great you know the pivot may the, the the fed may pivot if they the market focuses at the core and the core comes in slightly higher um they're going to look at oh the fed could needs to continue to raise rates and he's not going to continue so that's really what the what the debate is we'll see that'll determine sort of what the market does and you know, it's, uh, you know, risky yesterday. I, I, my sort of advisor would be, hey, lock the rates if you haven't locked because it could be messy today. Mm -hmm. Nothing indicates it's going to be a change for the good, meaning rates would drop. 
because the data is not there really pointing at that. So either remains kind of the same volatile or, you know, increase. So, um, yeah, that's kind of what we're expecting. We'll, we'll get that at 8.30 today, so we'll see. Okay. That's the overall sort of number. It's inflation. It's it's what's there. And that's kind of the biggest thing this week is that inflation number. Mm -hmm. Okay. What are, what are the record highs and lows on that PCI? I don't know the record high and lows. Last year was uh, in the peak. Uh, I don't know, 9%. I don't remember what the peak number of inflation was, but that's when kind of everything freaked out and started, you know, set all this in motion with the, with the high interest. First, it was the inflation was, first, there was no inflation. Mm -hmm. Then it was, don't worry, it's transitory. Then, oh, wait, we got to get inflation to 2%. And that's where we're at now. We're going to, you know, 2% inflation. Mm -hmm. so it's freaking out it was nine and whatever it was I, I i'll look it up tomorrow come back I, I forget what the number was the high the peak and how how often is the pci report released every is month monthly? Mm -hmm. okay yeah. yeah every month we go through the same thing every month it's the same kind of it's the same kind of game you know you're looking at data the numbers are there they're comparing it's old data last year's number year over year month over month but mm -hmm. it's, these are all monthly reports Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And, um, I mean, is the, do they come out in the same sequence that we've been discussing though? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's a, this, this, this calendar, it's a, this thing is a set thing. Like every month, the same kind of same things play out. Gotcha. It's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of surveys. It's a lot of manipulation of data. You know, this year it's been messy. They've been, you know, finding numbers and they just throw numbers in there and they do seasonal adjustments and a lot of fuzzy math, you know. How is the, how is the data collected exactly? Like, is it the, like the, like the one, through, like the, it's gotta be through consumer behavior, right? Correct. It's, you know, just the cost of things. I, I, I really like the PCI. I don't, I don't know what the algorithm is and how they, how they do the math. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, like I said, the housing, for example, I mean, it's it's a complicated thing to kind of dive in and look at it. Um, I've never really, to be honest, you never dove in and like read the actual report. Mm -hmm. It's like just, just data coming at you. I I read the, you know, sort of what people, you know, kind of put together after what, that they read it. Um, yeah, analysis, the review. You know, yeah. So it's, I, I, I don't know what the data is, but like, for example, that, you know, 43% is shelter costs, right? The housing. That's, mm -hmm. that's a big number, the cost of housing. But then the cost of housing is they base it on rentals. And they base it on rentals and it's but it's you know it's a it's a history and it's about it's about between 14 to 18 months lagging the data mm -hmm. from housing. I mean, I would imagine it's 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 gotta be hard to keep up with you know the new household formations new construction right it's really hard oh, it's really it's that really, has to trickle in but and and but not only that like the when you if you look at the like the bls report mm -hmm. which is the jobs created uh the uh, bureau of labor statistics right the bls mm -hmm. that's what the bls report bureau of labor statistics report um that is that is a survey like they call people's houses and ask them are you working how many people in your household and are they all working like that's how they come up with that data, um, you know. I mean, it's, it's a survey. You know what I mean? It's just it's well, complicated. Like ADP is a little bit different again. I and I don't know all the intricacies and the details of, but ADP, it's from their data, right? And it's ADP is one of the largest, you know, payroll providers. So you think they have, you know, real data, right? Because they actually do that. Like they're their payroll services company. Mm -hmm. uh, so they have actual data on actual payrolls, um, you know, so that in my mind would be more aligned with reality. Uh, you know what I mean? Just because it's a, it's a survey of actual employees. The other one is just phone calls and saying, are you working this month? Uh, but that's what they've been using for years. Yeah. I wonder how accurate that can be if, you know, there's people on the do not call list. There's people who don't answer unknown numbers. like. 
That I would that that has to be very yeah. questionable. Yeah, I, I mean, I, again, I don't know the specifics, what the methodology is to collect the data. How do they? I I have no idea. I've never looked into that. But it's just, I mean, it's just not a not a very practical, you know, model. You know, just kind of. Are you working this month? I mean, it's just not. It's not really practical. So you, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of data in there that's just then they throw numbers and you know it's it's easily it's easy to manipulate that data. Yeah, uh, and and and, you're, and it's easy to misread the data. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so it's just this big blog of stuff that's kind of there and misinterpret you know, it, but it yeah. still has an impact on you know potentially what decision the Fed makes. It has a major impact. I mean, but again, the I mean, if you really boil on the fat, I I, I shared the story of how they came up with two percent. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Janet Yellen just, just and then oh great sounds like a number great it's a great idea I mean it's just who's on first you know what I mean I mean and, they, and, they, <laughs> and this guy is like again I'm not you know they're a lot a lot smarter than I am and I have a lot more education than I do and you know and then this but it does it's it's it's, it's just not a logical thing for me to you know if there's some data saying okay two percent is the number because of this and historically and this and blah 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 well then that's a different story but if yeah. they just you know if you know if somebody just said a meeting let's put a number two percent well yeah sure that sounds like a great idea two percent you know and then this guy's on you know been for a year we got to get to two percent we got to get to two percent there's going to be pain there's going to be pain we got to get to two percent and, and two percent is a mythical number mm -hmm. then where are we going i mean what are we doing uh, when are we going to if it's a mythical number when are we going to be at two percent we're never going to be at two percent <laughs> so you, you're going to break something in the economy you're going to cause major pain uh, to people, I mean, people losing jobs and people losing, you know, and, and the solution is, okay, the inflation prices goes up, inflation is going to go down. Mm -hmm. And they're, and they're using, and again, I'm not, I don't pretend to know the answer because I really don't, but they're using, they're using formulas that they learned and that worked in the seventies. Um, and they're just trying to continue the, the, you know, manage the economy in the same way. Um, yeah, you know, it's not, it's not the same. It's not the seventies. Like the economy is not like this. They're, they're looking at data that different people in the seventies. Yeah. There was energy shortage and oil prices were up and inflation was up and there was all kinds of conflicts and geopolitical and this and that and the other. And, but the, the way people worked and the way people did things was different. Like people were, you can see like people went to work they worked in the same job for 20 years they, you know what i mean it's it was the same now it's now it's just people are not it's not the same thing people are not the same company for a long time there's a lot of people with the side hustles and internet and doing their own business and independent contractors the labor force participation is the lowest it's been ever mm. that means that there's less people participating and actually trying to get a job but people are living obviously right people are not living off of air they're, they're they're still making money they're able they're feeding the family that so they're just generating income in different, in different ways. ways you yeah. know you got the the uber and uber eats and all you know what i mean all these things that people can just these high site hustles that it's sort of the norm um the pandemic hit people left just people left work like people don't want to work at you know at fast food restaurants anymore like you know now they want to be you know they don't want to work in positions where they're not happy. Well, I, I've noticed that. That's been seen a couple of my friend business owners. Like, absolutely. I mean, and, and people it, will drop a job <laughs> if you even talk to them the wrong way. And, and they're in a situation of, you know, it, it, exactly. Right? I mean, that's a whole different conversation like that, that could just go, you know, completely in a different, yeah, yeah. In a different way. Right. It's, <laughs> But it's it's a situation where, and that's what I mean. Like the things are so different now, right? So now it's before, when 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 they were dealing with the economy in the seventies, the mentality of people were different. People were actually like thankful they have a job mm -hmm. and they actually went to work and they tried and it did. Now people are like, you know, you go into work and you know, I don't know, you're the you get paid for cooking and something falls and spills and everybody all hands on deck you go clean up the guy that cooks i don't i don't i don't clean i get paid to cook i mean the thing mentality has really really changed that's just the new world we live in yeah but you know and ironically you say that i've been i was like for instance last week when you mentioned bricks i was looking into like the leaders 
of of those countries that have joined forces and you know studying the patterns and behaviors they're all roughly around the same age so like the people these world leaders and political influencers and ultimately decision makers they're operating from the ideals right the ideologies that they know and are comfortable with over the years regardless of how fast the world is moving they're not in the modern day way of thinking they're not aligned with it um i mean maybe uh, i think I, it's a fair I statement there i mean yeah i mean the, yeah i mean the the, the they're aligned with they, i mean they're just they're they're all socialists i mean you mm -hmm. gotta you gotta call a spade a spade you can't can't you know what I mean? It's they're all socialist. Every single one of the countries that's in there either is, has a, is a socialist country, has some kind of dictator regime in place, right? Um, mm -hmm. And they're led by China and Russia. They're trying to be players in the world. Um, you know, China sort of snuck in and caught everybody by surprise. I mean, some some people felt back in the day that, you know, and then the day, I mean, in the 90s, mid 90s, when China was kind of allowed into this thing and, you know, it's good and, you know, oh, democracy, and we got to, you know, and they get into this, you know, they start influencing and, and they saw potential and they saw money. I mean, money, obviously, China's a huge, huge potential for money. I mean, look at, Look and 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 unfortunately, we've become a, a society of you know hypocrisy, right? So, you know, on, on the one hand, you're saying, oh, the human rights in China were, you know, oh. but then on the other hand, you got the NBA, for example, you know, kind of catering to China and doing whatever China wants because of the amount of people that that they have access to to view the you know the NBA and and mm -hmm. so it's all about the Benjamin, you know what I mean? So there's a double standard of, 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 you know, what's, what's acceptable and what's not. And, and, and there's certain groups that do certain things. Okay. Yeah. I mean, people, certain groups of people that accept certain things. So, you, you, I mean, you can't, you, you, you know, you, you have to, like, I have this, this debate not to get into a political debate, uh, but just, it's an example. Like, <laughs> uh, and like, I, I'll, I'm obviously I'm from Colombia. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I'll, I'll have a conversation. I don't really get involved in, Colombian politics too much because I don't know enough. Is, is politics big out there? Oh yeah, big, huge. Uh, you know, people people get killed for you know not now, but back in the day, people get killed depending on what party you were in. Yeah, it's very, very you know very political. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I don't really get too involved in it because I don't know anything about it, right? I I don't I like to stay away from things that I have no knowledge of, right? I just kind of if I don't have enough knowledge to have a conversation, I'll just keep my mouth shut and and just listen. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so I, so I, I don't, I don't know much about the, the, the political system or how it works or, you know, so I kind of don't get too much into the, into those conversations, but in general, two minute, you know, Colombia has been, has a lot of issues for, because of, you know, drugs and internal conflict, right? This is a civil war kind of been being fought since, I don't know, 1930 something, 1940 something. It's been going on for years. Um, mm -hmm. And there's, there was a guerrilla, right? The leftist group that started as a socialist group, like just the people who with the socialist ideas that, you know, the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer and kind of, you know, they kind of, which is fine. I mean, that's, that's, a, and they kind of started this process, but during the process, they kind of lost their north and actually then they become, they became involved with drug dealers. And mm -hmm. after like the cartels, mm -hmm. the corruption. Well, money, yeah. I mean, just you know. So after the the cartels and you know Pablo Escobar and all this stuff kind of disappeared, the actual the guerrilla are actually the ones that they kind of took over that trade, like they took over the drug dealer, and they're the ones that that, that kind of handled that part. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's you know there's been a process sort of you know so much so that the current president was a former guerrilla, uh, you know, machine gun you know, kidnapping people, killing people. There's pictures of him with the machine gun. Like that's, he's the current president of Colombia. Yeah. Um, now th that right there makes you think, right? Like how would you in your right mind say, I'm going <laughs> to vote for this guy, but that's what people did. You know what I mean? I mean, just whatever. I mean, so he obtained but the there was before. Be so all these years, this, all this process, the, this gorilla, you know, has caused a lot of 
turmoil and killed a lot of people and a lot of stuff, you know, has happened. And there was a president, uh, he was in for two terms, Alvaro Uribe is his name. Um, very controversial, very, uh, you know, he was called, you know, right wing, you know, extremist and, you know, caused a lot of tension in the country. Mm -hmm. um, and in, in my opinion, again, I live, you know, my parents live there, you know what I mean? So I still, I have obviously have ties there, but I'm not there in the day-to-day -day life, but my family's there. Uh, but in my opinion, and then a lot of people that I kind of share this opinion, is the greatest president Colombia's ever had. Uh, because Colombia was in a going like on a downhill spiral quickly because of the violence and these these groups were just taken over. And this guy came in and said, wait a minute, no, we gotta like like we gotta stop this. And you know, he actually the guerrilla used to, you know, they were like they would do stuff in Colombia and then they would in Ecuador, they had a socialist president in Venezuela, obviously they have a socialist president. They would do the stuff in Colombia and then flee across the border. Colombia borders these two countries. So they would flee like and, and they were actually hiding in the jungles of Ecuador near the border. But they were in, in you know in the foreign country, right? The Colombian, you know, and the government of Ecuador let them. It's not a problem. Yeah. And and they found they were like after these people and they got like they infiltrated and they had a chip on these medical equipment that they brought them and they they you know they had a pinpoint location and this guy dropped the bomb on him and killed a guy. He was like the leader of this guerrilla group. And mm -hmm. he invaded mm -hmm. Ecuador's airspace. He invaded, like he invaded their space, dropped the bomb on the guy, and it was almost a war in, you know, between Colombia and Ecuador. Wow. So, it, you know, so this guy was, that's the type of guy that the president was, right? Uh, you know, some could compare him to the former president. You know, um, and then obviously there's a political thing, and some people don't have, you know, they're from a different party, so they say he was the worst that thing ever happened, and he violated human rights, and because he a lot of gorilla were killed. Like a lot of bad guys were killed. I mean, that's just that's what you do, right? You got to come exactly. in. You know, they're good. <laughs> so you know. So then, but the, he's criticized as you know the, the the other side, like the opposition. He's the worst. He violated human rights, and he did this, and he did that. So during the last election, there's Colombian people that I know here that vote here. And also are involved in Colombia. I don't mm -hmm. know if they vote or not. I don't know. If, you know, I don't ask them if they vote, but they're very involved and very passionate, right? So, and I would have the conversation like, so they were here, and they were complaining about you know the past president. How so they voted for the current president, right? So we went from one agenda to the other, right? Again, I'm not saying which one's right, wrong. It doesn't matter. It's it's just. Yeah. But but I feel that you can't. So you can't be in this country support one ideology the left but then in colombia they supported the right because the guy in the right they're like he's the best they ever had he's like he's awesome he's wonderful he's the best so over there it's the right but over here's the left mm -hmm. and you can't that doesn't make any sense to me you have to either be always on the right or always on the left or always in the middle or well i would say this i would say this it might be justified that they see him in a certain light because he brought order to the country and you know uh probably rearrange the infrastructure to to the dynamics and everything and here they're just confused and misled i mean clearly that's i mean that's the only <laughs> logical solution right because it's yeah, because you can't you know you can't be you can't have two different sets of beliefs you gotta you know it's like right now it's kind of the same things happening in el salvador mm -hmm. the president of el salvador you know that situation at all no no i don't president salvador so salvador has a big problem right mm -hmm. you have this salvador similar situation as colombia without the drugs right over there was a civil war but mm -hmm. it was a sort of political kind of thing right and they had a civil war for years and it's bloody and bad a lot of people got killed like it's just it's been bad right so a lot of people left that because it was really bad for people there so and and it, and, it, and it happened a lot in the countryside so like a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of young, you know, like men, right. Kids, baby, you know, 12, 13 year old, like they, they got pulled into this conflict and they were in this, they went to this war. So a lot of them didn't go to school, just a lot of bad things. Right. So these people, they, they, they flee a lot of like, you know, the fathers got killed in the war. Like a lot of families were broken up, just 
bad situation, right? So all these poor, you know, people had to like leave, right? The violence or escaping the violence, and they came to stay. Mm -hmm. They had children, right? So these are, you know, people that came. They they fled the jungle, like the country. Not a lot of education. They came here, started working, had kids. Kids kind of grew up um, illegal. Number one, right? Because parents came over illegally, um, and number two lost the English so they didn't really like really they grew up here they didn't really learn to speak Spanish right they kind of grew up in English and parents were working whatever and they kind of fell into this hole of you know MS-13 or 18th street gang right and so these these gangs started mm -hmm. in LA and then it just kind of spread across the whole country and then you got these kids you know you don't really hear about that here too much in Florida yeah um Except for in the prisons. Except in the prisons but you don't really see it in the street like up in Boston you know in Boston it was it was over there was the more you know the wannabe gangers like you know what i mean not la was real kind of thing the ones Boston, yeah, yeah, yeah. wannabe but nonetheless but the danger is nonetheless right they got the network yeah yeah so they got they, they, they got the tats and you know ms-13 they got the whatever their little signals and they're tough guys and they do right so they're all these for the most part and well <laughs> and and the, the gang is called ms-13 mm -hmm. mara salvatrucha that's mm -hmm. Salvadorian gang. That's what the translation is. So literally, they were most for the most part, there a lot of Salvadorians. Yeah. So they come, you know, they're here, they commit crimes, they get arrested, they go to jail, but they're illegal. So they do their time and they get deported. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how many, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands, hundreds, you know, tens of thousands got deported to El Salvador. So they they they're dropping these now they're adults who mm -hmm. left their who left the u.s i mean their country to the u.s when they were kids babies born you know children they mm -hmm. grew up in the states became in gang they don't they don't speak spanish they have no connection other than they were born in el salvador that's the only co connection they have a lot of them don't really even speak spanish yeah they yeah. got they got the port of back the only spanish they know how to say is 13. I'm yeah. not say. or 18th street <laughs> Uh, so you know what? I'm not even going to talk about it. <laughs> like they, we, uh, they, we probably shouldn't publish this part because we're probably going to get in trouble. <laughs> they, no, I mean it was it was bad because they, again they, they they just criminal. You know what I mean? They just came, they went to us. Yeah, yeah. So they got deported, and now they're back in El Salvador, creating havoc. Mm -hmm. they, just, they took over the country. They were just Wild. they were just it was the Wild Wild West. I mean, they just took over the country. They were just they're killing people, kidnapping people. Like they were just it was a bad situation. So this guy came in, and he was like, "Okay, no problem." And he last year they changed the constitution, and he basically took over like the kind of like all executive. Like he was the president, but he needed extra powers to be able to do this, and basically mm -hmm. declared a state of emergency. And I mean, if you if you have a tat, you got arrested because the mm -hmm. only ones that have the tats like that and the gang are the ones that are in the gang so they just yeah, it's 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 frowned upon to have the tattoos and whatnot it, well it, or, or it labels it labels yeah. the, having the tattoos is not it's not bad it's just that the people that have the tattoos are killing people so you know what do you look like he had a tattoo. Yeah, yeah exactly yeah. exactly I mean, just, so he's like okay went in and he just they just rounded up people and they just rounded them up Mm -hmm. put them all in a jail and he, they build a cell they build a jail they just opened it up like a, a month ago two months ago mm -hmm. uh a hundred people can fit in a cell like it's blocks a hundred okay. people so, so like a bay a bay yeah but it's for a hundred people mm -hmm. you only have 80 beds but they put a hundred and you figure it out and they all walk it in like they they, they transfer them into the prison box of shorts nothing on but box of shorts mm -hmm you know handcuffs legs and and, and arms handcuffs shackles, and, shackles and, 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 and shackles and you know and then they got the guy from s and they're they're enemies like to the death 18th street and like the bloods and the crips same, same yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. they got an ms-13 guy in the the 18th street handcuffs the next to, <laughs> handcuffs walking together next to each other you see the tats like one has 18 the other one has ms-13 yeah and he's got them living like that and you know it's, 100 100 people 80 beds you figure it out so he's been getting a lot of heat for that um and he's been saying oh what about the human rights of the prisoners and he's saying well what about the human rights of the victims whose right. human rights are more important and those are those are conversations that i mean it's just a political debate right you know because yeah do the do the criminals have human rights well, of course they do 
they're just getting put in a position to kill themselves. <laughs> but what about the what about the victim? So who's human now? Are the victims' human rights more important than the perpetrators' human rights? It shouldn't be right. They they both should have equal human rights. However, we should somehow I feel kind of focus on the victim, right? Not the perpetrator. Um, right. Well, that's kind of the that that those kind of debates lie, right? I mean, it's just and it's a, it's a tough. So the the book kind of go back to the bricks and all the stuff it's just your your these countries are forming with this ideology you know brazil argentina like argentina is dying like mm -hmm. literally argentina is dying on the vine like it's just it's 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 dying i mean it's just the, the money is there's no money inflation is out of control i think it's people here in the states don't really see that they'll know that they'll pay attention to that but argentina is a country like i you know, i know somebody who's there i talked to it's just it's it's in, it's in trouble. I mean, it's just in bad bad shape. They have literally like no money, and it's a socialist yeah. country that you know this lady's been in power. Like her husband was president, she was president, now she's the vice president. Corruption. I mean, it's just all kinds of crazy things going on, and you know, so they kind of joined with this thing, Brazil, same kind of concept. It's just you know, which is the idea. But oh, they're lost in the sauce. I mean, there there's so, there's, a, there's a combination of countries that want to. You know, have the side, you know, believe socialism and it's great, right? So you have that portion, but then you got like China and Russia, right? The, Russia's not, Putin is not trying to bring, I don't know what to his people. He's just, he's a psycho. Like he's just the guy that, you know, who, who, who's evil and he'll kill somebody. He'll, he'll kill you. Like he won't think about it. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, he don't. This, I mean, this guy stole Bob, Robert Kraft's Super Bowl round. That's crazy. Do you know that story? No. Robert Kraft, I think it was the fourth, fourth Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. They were wherever they were in the same place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Putin and Robert Kraft were in the same place, whatever, however that happened. And when they met, Kraft had the ring on and he said, can I see the ring? And Kraft took the ring off and showed it to him and he looked at it. Oh, this is beautiful. And he put it in his pocket. That was like... <laughs> it looks in the book. Yeah, Kraft was like, and they had to like, I mean, Kraft wasn't going to fight, you know, obviously, I mean, but they kind of like, like, no, hold on a second. Like, let's not start, you know, an international conflict here over a ring. And they let him, mm -hmm. he let him keep the, he kept the ring, he put it in his pocket. Oh, oh, nice ring. Oh, and he put it in his pocket. That's like, crazy. It's insane, dude. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. I mean, this guy's bad. He's just, you know, and then you, you have to treat him as bad. You can't treat him as, you know, you just can't treat him as oh maybe he's not bad maybe he's a good guy he's a mm -hmm. bad guy he's killed people like you know what I mean it's just you you have to acknowledge that you can't not you know deny that China they're not good I mean they're just they 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 violate you know they use you know I mean yeah labor's cheap but you know they pay these children you know fifty cents a day to to go work on the Nike fight you know the Nike factory mm -hmm. um, you know but. But then you have people here, like the movie stars, oh, you know, equal rights, and we want, you know, minimum wage, $15 an hour, blah, but then they buy <laughs> Nikes, and they're paying these kids 30 cents a day. I mean, you yeah, have, they're, you, you they're, have to, hypocrisy is real. 100%. Sure. And that, but that, that that's what happens, right? We live in, we became this, now we're looking at social media and what's in the news, and we just kind of, whatever the news says, we believe. And so housing, oh, bad, crash, don't buy house, no bueno, go, oh, stay away people oh, nope stay away you know the new said the housing prices is going to go down like i'm going to wait until the prices come down yeah they're not All coming right, down. So let's talk about that i'm glad you brought it back around full circle because today we're going to be talking about navigating the the closing process <laughs> <laughs> so like you know okay speaking of housing going bad right at the end of the day, whether we're in a good market or a bad market, transactions are closing. 100%. 100%. Even when the 2008 happened, transactions were closing. Maybe if you were going through a short sale, the process was longer. Um, for those people, for people who don't know, a short sale doesn't mean it's fast and quick. A short sale means that the lender is accepting a shorted amount on the debt. So, but in, in turn, in actuality, in all, in all reality, a short sale can be longer. It can be short, quick, but it can be prolonged as well. 
So we're going to go over the, um, the closing process, right, for both buyers and sellers. And, John, I mean, with the amount of deals and transactions that you've closed over the years, you know, there's a lot of moving parts when it comes to financing, and then you have the agent, and then you have the buyer. I mean, what, what you know, how would you describe the closing process from your side? Since primarily the majority of your deals, you're dealing with the buyers, right? Uh, yes. I mean, for the most part, that's what we deal with. It's just whoever the, you know, the buyer is. Um, the closing process uh, in itself, if you kind of... <laughs> If you were, if you would, if it was a process that could be visualized, like, you know, outward, mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, it's the image of the, you know, the brain with all the things messed up and all the wires going all over the place and the thing just moving because it's just a lot of moving pieces. It's insane how many different moving parts are, are into this. Mm -hmm. um, and you throw on top of that the amount of like red tape and bureaucracy that they that they threw on, uh, you know, that the government threw on after the 08. And all, so they, you throw all that stuff that they added on to protect the public, which is what it was intended to do. Mm -hmm. um, but they just put too much regulation and too much stuff that just it's just it's unsustainable. And it, 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 well, no, it's not unsustainable, but. It, all the regulation and all the restrictions, it just creates more stuff to do. So the, the closing process is actually messy because there's, there's all these, um, all the triggers that come in with the CD, for example, right? So, the, the, and it's and, and it's a good thing. I mean, it's meant to be because back in the day, it, it was, a, we talked about this at some point, it was the Wild West, right? They tell somebody, yeah, you're applying for an FHA loan at 6%. And mm -hmm. then they get to the closing table and, oh, no, we couldn't do FHA. We're going to do stated income, you know, nine and a half percent. Um, well, well, what do you mean? I can't afford this. Well, then you're gonna lose your deposit because we're, we're at the closing table. I mean, that's literally the way it happened. It was the. It was just like a a bait and switch. One hundred percent. It was literally the. I mean, that's what it was. It was at the closing table. Like people were actually set the closing table and they went on. They start seeing the payments. You know, rate is nine percent. What do you mean? Well, yeah, you didn't qualify FHA, so we had to do stated income. Could, but don't worry about it. It's two years, and you refinance, and then you can do FHA. And don't worry. You know, that's exactly how they told two people because you can't even get to the closing table today without knowing those things up front exactly and that's why that's the reason why right i mean if you have you, have you watched the have you watched the have you watched the big short yeah 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 i saw that on netflix have you read the book no i didn't read the book read the I book the read the book it's much better than the movie because mm. it has a lot more detail Mm, okay, and okay. I'm telling you, man, read it. That's a good book to read. I mean, I didn't and, even know it. Honestly, until now, I didn't even know it was a book. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, it started as a book. I mean, that's it always starts with a book. Yeah. So, <laughs> but read the book because that has more detail. And I'm telling you, man, that's what, like, it, you know, the big short and the, and the scene when they come to Florida and they're mm -hmm. interviewing when they, when, when the guy, whatever his name is, I forget his name, the, the main guy. Uh, when they come to Florida and they're trying to like interview when they're in like the at the at the strip John inter interviewing the the stripper who owned like three pro three properties. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you remember that scene? Like you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I own three properties because stated income. It was mm -hmm. like these stated income uh, programs. Mm -hmm. And you know, she's like, oh, I, I own three of them. I mean, and, and and that's when this guy realized, like, oh my god, this thing's huge because that's literally. Just and at, at that time, were they even looking at tax returns? No, it was stated income. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, That's yo, that blows and, my mind. Oh, <laughs> and then and then you watch the end of the movie. If like if you remember, you watch the end of the movie, the, the, the those same guys, like they're two LOs and they're making money and they're killing and they do all this thing. And at the same at the end of the movie, they're like at a job fair, like trying to get a job at like uh, like a hardware store or something. I, I forget. Yeah. Because like, the guys were not very bright. Like they were just the, you know, and, and that's yeah. truly, truly what happened. I mean, you had these people just and making money, like making all kinds of crazy money, but they they just bait and switch. So that is the reason why they they did all this. Stuff. The problem is, unfortunately, they 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 overregulated so much that what they caused was there's this these these minimal thresholds that are in place on a CD where fees cannot change. Mm -hmm. So everything is about the fees. 
right? Because they're trying to, they're so focused on the feet and the percentages are so, so small and so minuscule that, and the way it is, if, if it changes, you have X amount of days to trigger like a change, a, a change of circumstance and mm -hmm. you know, why that change was necessary, that fee to be increased and you have to send out the loan estimate to the borrower and, you know, and it's all, that's all perfect. I mean, it's, it should be that way. The mm -hmm. problem is that it's so it's very extreme and very strict and there's really no room for really anything. And if you don't get the the change in time to the borrower, mm -hmm. the lender has to eat it. Because mm, it has to be disclosed. It has to be disclosed. So the lender has to procure, like they have to eat the fees, right? So obviously yeah. that costs money to lenders. So in you know, so to, to protect themselves, what lenders do is they do the loan estimate mm -hmm. and it's higher they, they, because the loan estimate tells you this is the highest you should expect okay. to pay. That's so what the I, loan estimate means. The loan estimate means- yeah, I was just selling my, uh, I have some buyers which we're working on a uh, property uh, for like an investment property for them. And I let them know like, hey, we overestimate everything because it's better to have more and need less than to have less and need more 100 percent. and and, and i have i i, I kind of say this a little bit different but it's the same concept is i'd rather tell you you know i'd rather round up how much you need and tell you geez john i got you know i have a thousand dollars extra than mm -hmm. me round down and then you'll be short a thousand then you're gonna call john but you, you know yeah. i'm a thousand short what are you doing to me like i'd rather people you know what i mean it's just it's everybody's it's common sense so but that's the, the the problem is people focus because now they, they they've gone the other way. So they add prices like they, they inflate because the loan estimate is that just it's the, it's not that they that they inflate the prices and charge people more. No, mm -hmm. they just on the loan estimate, the, the numbers are higher because that's the highest you can expect to pay. So people mm -hmm. are prepared. You could pay, but people don't understand that. So you put, I don't know, uh, escrows, the prepaids, you know, five months. 500 bucks a month with property taxes, you know, 2,500 bucks, ah, 2,500 bucks. What's this? You know, what, you know, well, you got to, you need the reserves and, but, you know, at the closing, you know, it'll be three months and five, but it has to be disclosed at five. And but at the beginning, people see that and they get like, oh my God, well, they get charged every money. Mm -hmm. So, and because then there's other, you know, there's some places before they, they just wouldn't put anything like the coasters, you know, cost for like minimum. And then they get to the closing and it'd be the same thing, like ah, whatever, 3% closing cost. I'm making a number up. And they get mm -hmm. to the closing, oh, you got to pay two points because the rate wasn't there and sorry, and, you know. And, and it was always money that pe they knew people had. So they, they were playing with the people's money without the They were basically, money. yeah, in a sense, secretively throwing in like, oh, well, we, we already confirmed that they have this money. So we'll get them. And, cause it, and it, was, it, was, it was that or walk away. But once you're at the closing table, you already have a you you already, know, Yeah, you're already, already thinking about moving in. There's, there's, there's people that I know that when the crisis happened in 08 and the banks closed, mm -hmm. they were at the closing table and the bank closed before they were able to fund. So they didn't fund the loan. Oh, snap. And, and they lost their deposit. The seller kept their deposit. Wow. No, the guy was, but contract said you did not perform because the seller performed. He's at the closing table, willing and ready to sell. And the buyer yeah, did yeah, not yeah. perform and he already had a commitment letter, right? So once you're past the commitment, you got the commitment letter. Locked like, in. You're, the, you're, you're in. You know, and the guy kept their deposit. They tried to kept their deposit. So wow. it, it's, I mean, that's the type of stuff. So people were obviously afraid of losing the deposit. So that's that's how they leveraged, you know, sort of, you know, people, right? They, they leveraged situations. So they added all these rules, which dot Frank and all these regulations and all this stuff. But that added just an extra layer of that adds costs. Mm -hmm. ultimately the one that pays for that are the buyers right so because there's more stuff there's more works that needs to be done you got to just keep an eye there's a lot of pressure on the disclosures have to be because the fines are really really heavy and you know what i mean it's the penalties for so they're all focused on regulation and making sure everything's okay mm -hmm. and that just causes more hurdles so in the meantime you got like you know you you, you got buyer i mean it's just CD has to go out. You need to sign the CD. Yes, I'll sign this. You need to sign the CD before midnight. Yes, I'll sign it. Yes, you need to sign the CD. Here's the CD. You need to sign it. Mm -hmm. They don't sign the CD. Oh, I couldn't log in. Yeah. Yeah, close.
Oh, what I fell mean? asleep. <laughs> what do you mean we can't close? Well, what do you mean? Well, we can't close three days. And tomorrow's, you know, today's Friday, tomorrow's Saturday, but Sunday doesn't count. Monday's a holiday. We can't close until Wednesday. Mm -hmm. well, what do you mean? The movies are coming through Tuesday. All right, interesting. I mean, that's that's a true. So that's all. <laughs> that's all part of the drama that you deal with the with the closing. So I do I do relate a uh, real estate transaction to a roller coaster. Um, but you never know when the twist and turns is going to happen. It either happens at the very beginning, the middle, or the end. Very rarely do you get a smooth ride. Like, as a matter of fact, when you, when you do get a smooth ride on a transaction, you don't even realize that it's happening until it's closing time. <laughs> uh, I mean, a little bit different for, for, from, the, from the realtor perspective. You know, mm -hmm. from my perspective, I mean, there's just things can always happen. But if you do your work up front, mm -hmm. like the same day mortgage, right? The same day mortgage works really, you know, really well. It's the same really fast and really good. The it's a matter that, of having all your ducks in a row earlier on. That's all it is. I mean, that's really all it is. There's no other. There's no other difference, right? So, the majority of the the way the industry works is, especially you know, when you have LOs that produce a lot, you know, high producing, you know, they're out producing, right? They're talking to people. That's what they do, right? So they're just talking, getting leads, talking to people, talking to people, talking to people, and then they have a team that's kind of doing the the actual loan part of it right the loan officer will stop and depending how busy they are right they, it really depends on the volume mm -hmm. but they're they're out churning you know just sort of out lead generating right mm -hmm. but the actual process it, it could be so you guys don't really see that that like you have a different sort of view of the process for internally what what the for the most part right i'm generalizing but right? yeah so what the industry does is They'll talk to the client. The client will apply now with technology, right? Client applies online, completes the application, says how much they make, blah, blah. You run to you. You get an approved eligible. Oh, done. You work. You talk to the buyer. Oh, here's the pre-approval. Sign the contract. Do this. Get it going and start the process. Mm -hmm. Then you start collecting pay stubs and W-2s and the process. But that, you know, the starts, documents and, yeah. starts after the, it, the process already kind of started. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that can lead to to issues right because mm -hmm. if the inf incorrect income is put in then the, the incorrect income is used to calculate you know the debt to income ratio and if it actually it's lower then the debt to income ratio is higher and the person won't qualify right so you, you have to be careful with that mm -hmm. so like say what what is the trick with same day mortgage is you know and and the, the buyer gets a 250 dollar lender credit for completing it Mm -hmm. so it doesn't cost the buyer any money. It's actually the buyer actually gets two hundred and fifty bucks for the close, right? Okay. And they, and they have to provide their documents within eight hours. Okay. Or access to the documents. So, so that's for doing the that's for doing the same day mortgage. Same day mortgage, right? Because it's you know so the buyer so the the, the the if you read the small the small print is if the buyer provides the documents within the first eight hours, then they're eligible to get the $250 lender credit, right? It's an incentive to get people, but it's really to get the people with the documents in at the beginning. Of course, that's but a good incentive. If you, if like, if you collect the documents up front, like, so my, my, the way I do thing, I've always done it. I, I don't, I don't know how to do it any other way. Mm -hmm. I won't tell you, I will not. Is that something, up. is that something that's promotable? Like, Hey, you know, my name is John Sepulveda. I want to tell you really quickly about the same day mortgage. If you apply for the same day mortgage and you get all your documents in, you get 200, uh, 200. Oh yeah. 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 100, I mean, that, that's a video already. That, that'll be one of the, we're talking about right earlier. Like they'll be, okay, it's cool. already made that it's not, it's just a little, you know, yeah. I mean, it's definitely promotable. And, but, but the, the gist of it is you just get the docs up front. That's really, that's, you need that to be able to be fast. So the way mm -hmm. I've always worked is I, I always get the docs up front. I don't, the first time I talk to a like I have a conversation with a buyer and you know answer their questions and see where they're going and see where they're at I'll, you know I'll determine if if it's a we're gonna if it's something if it's a viable pre-approval at this point or there needs to work, some work to be done right based on the conversation mm -hmm. but if it's a viable situation where you know I mean the pay stubs W twos so I could see it and I can calculate the income I collect that up front mm -hmm. I don't I don't I don't issue pre-approvals without looking at the verifying the income in the doc without looking at it 
Gotcha. That's just my personal thing. I feel that if I like if I That's sign my way. name, if I put my name to the pre-approval, it means that I've done my part and check that people actually qualify. Because what's the point of what's that? That's another one of these mysteries that you'll never I'll never be able to solve. And if somebody solves it, you know, that happens a lot with lenders. Mm -hmm. It's just they'll just they'll take whatever and they'll throw it against the wall and whatever sticks well that's what i'm closing this month yeah and that's, and that's changed that has been you know that you see it a lot of this I'm definitely see, i mean you see buyers that get go in and they are pre-approved and then they, they don't qualify mm -hmm. how'd you, how you pre-approve them yeah yeah i've definitely stopped working with lenders for that reason for sure they were they 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 um i remember this one lender in particular he's like oh yeah they're good you know, they can go up to 400,000, uh, this, that, and the third, you know, he basically looked at it from a bird view. He didn't, he didn't look at the details. So when we got to start submitting, um, submitting offers, I realized real quickly, like, oh, he didn't, he didn't really do his due diligence on this buyer. Mm -hmm. that, um, that happens a lot. That That's the norm. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. that happens a lot. So yeah, so when I, I'm working with a lender who I see is performing in that way, that they only look at the screenshot and they don't gather everything until you're under contract, I'm like, all right, this is definitely not a lender relationship that I'm gonna. Continue. That's a re that's a recipe for for trouble. I mean, mm -hmm. you're, just, you're just setting yourself up for pain, and you know, and those are the deals that are what you were referring to, like the, the emotions and the you know. The roller coasters. The roller coaster sort of ride. I mean, it, it, yes. I mean, it's a transaction. It's a. It could be a messy deal, but if you have the stuff up front, if you know up front what you what you're dealing with and what the situation is, and you strategize and you have a plan, mm -hmm. you follow that plan through the end. Do things come up? Of course, things come up. Yeah. But it, it, in general, you can. There's you can avoid the surprises if if you collect the data up front. Mm -hmm. you know Absolutely. What I mean? Because it, it happened, I mean, you know, somebody's like, oh, you know, I'm like, oh, I've been with my job for two years or three years or 10 years or whatever. Oh, yeah, 40 hours a week. Yeah, it was 40 hours a week. Okay. And then you get their pay stub in the W-2 and you get the W-2 and or, or you get whatever it is, the year to date, you know, number and doesn't match. Yeah. Or like last year, there's a, the, the W-2 doesn't match. You know, the guy, the person makes 40,000 a year and last year's W-2 was, you know, half, 20,000. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Why is your why was your income last year? What happened? Well, you know, I I, I don't work forty hours. Oh, wow. I forgot to mention. <laughs> and, and no, but I, I truly believe that for the most part, you know, some people do hide it. They want to. I don't know why they think you're not going to figure it out. But some people kind of do believe that. But for the most part, I feel that people are just you just don't really think about that. I mean, you know, you know, you just really don't. You don't. You know, some people so they get caught by surprise. Like. Mm hmm. You know, they, they don't, oh, yeah, well, oh, you know, I was, <laughs> then, then you have to average their income. Right? Said, right, yeah, they absolutely. are really, so you go from, you know, somebody making 20 bucks an hour, 40 hours a week, and now you go average, and the average is, you know, 32 hours a week, 33 hours a week, that's a huge difference, seven hours, six hours every week for a year, that makes a huge difference, I mean, that's the difference between qualifying or not. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do that math up front, you know, imagine, you know, you get people's expectations shot, they go by, they Imagine they do all that process. They get an offer, accept it, and then they get they're outside. Oh, you don't qualify. Yeah, definitely. That definitely. is that's part of the reason why, you know, like FHA borrowers get when when the market gets tight, because usually you know they'll take a conventional twenty percent down more and more. You know, then seller will look at this and look go that route and accept the offer instead of an FHA offer, because it's less down payment, it's, you know, it, they, they see it in their minds as this is more risk. That's why I'm going to accept the conventional because more money, you put more money down. That's why cash offers also, you know, like a seller will take a cash offer, even if it's less money above a, you know, because of oh, it's cash, it's money. Again. And, the, and the contingencies. And the, and so contingencies. It's, it's a safety thing for the seller. It's not, you know, it's a risk thing. It's not, I, mean, I, I truly don't think that, the motive behind you know a seller not accepting oh we don't the like offer. fha <laughs> yeah, i mean it's, they don't know what it is they just they, got, is the guy, cash, they're getting the same cash. cash yeah this guy's cash it's just a dumb deal let me take the cash even you know what i mean it's just that's all it is i mean for the most part i i, I truly believe that so 
Mm-hmm. It, but it's it's all because of all these things that have happened throughout the years that that you know people unfortunately and and the ones that get hurt are the buyers unfortunately yeah. because you got the you know you got the lo that you know, whoops sorry I didn't know that I didn't check the pay oh I didn't I missed that you know and they're ready to close and then you and then these come up with the stories that's a, that's the other beauty because I get the I get the calls from the from the agents oh John this happened to me is that a thing. No, they made that up like you know when they suddenly like the the loan gets denied like did that ever happen to you like, yeah you're, you're thinking course. it's it's you know it's a done deal you're working it's you're doing it's and, sailing and, and then and suddenly you got to just call out of left field and they and, oh well, you know and they, and they give you this guideline and this rule that like nobody understands why the loan can't get closed and it's well it's because the yellow screwed up at the beginning and then it's the income and now the loan can't get approved because the debt to income is you know 70 and Max mm-hmm. is fifty five, so you you know. And they shouldn't have been buying a home in the first place. They should not have been. <laughs> they should not have been on the contract in the first place. But the buyers, it's not the buyer's fault because the buyer didn't pre-approve themselves. Mm-hmm. They're trying to follow the process and do what they've been told, and they don't, you know, they don't know. So that's the message. Right, so let's it. let's talk about closing costs, right? Um, something that I know it's pretty common is that a lot of people who are new to selling. Um, and or new to buying, right? Um, in some cases, it's both. If you're selling your starter home for the first time, you've never been through the selling process, there's a lot of cloudiness or ambiguity around who's responsible for closing costs. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I tell my clients, hey, buyers, in a typical transaction, buyers are responsible for their own closing costs, and sellers are responsible for their closing costs. So um, being that you've worked with both buyers on pre-existing homes and you've worked with buyers in new home construction, how would you say uh, on the buying side, there's a, the, the differences in the... I, I, tell, I tell buyers that the closing costs can be anywhere from 2 to 4% right? 4% on the high end, which is usually new construction closing costs, right? And as low as 2%, but I always tell them, hey, let's, let's, first of all, before I connect you with my lender, how much money do you have saved? And let's give a rough estimate based on the higher number, based on that 4%. So how do you deal with, with, with buyers? So my, my convert, preparing them yeah yeah my, my conversation down payment and closing costs before going under contract correct so my my conversation is slightly different um i believe that two percent is too low um mm-hmm. and it's so i my the number i give people is between three and four percent okay and usually it's it ends up at the three and a half percent and the change is the the and what i find at yeah. least here in florida i find that what makes the difference between that you know three to four percent is the startup fees for the HOA okay that's a big variable you know some don't have any some you know 2500 1500 there's there's big different startup fees so obviously that that has and that's part of the closing cost and that gets taken into consideration which is not really closing cost but it is right but it has nothing to do with the lender what the HOA charges but it's still lumped in into this closing disclosure that people think it's a closing cost so I mean, ultimately, it is because that's the cash you need to close. It, it is where it goes to, but it's easy. but it's but it's tied as it you know closing cost is tied as an ex, an expense from the lender to the buyer to do the transaction. Understood. Understood. That's the that's so the, the, the fee tied to the fee is tied to the lender, right? Yeah, yeah, I got gotcha. you. And it's and it's really not. It's really a third party fee. So. You know, because that's what it is. It's a third party fee that just gets put on the CD, just like the homeowner's insurance. Mm-hmm. The, the banks don't sell insurance. The banks just put the cost of this, the insurance, the homeowners on the CD, whatever that is. If it's 5000 a year, it's 5000 If it's 1000 it's 1000 The lender has no, lender doesn't make more or less money if your insurance rate is higher or lower. Um, yeah. You know, so for the taxes, the lender doesn't make money in the property taxes. They just pay it. So those the, but i find that three and a half is a good sort of average um on a obviously no points situation right when somebody's not paying any points just a regular straight out i so the conversation is three to four percent and three and a half percent is the number uh so if we're talking about an fha transaction you know between seven and seven and a half percent of the purchase price is what you'll need for funds 
And I usually, I tell people as well, have your first month's mortgage payment also ready at the close. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just in case. So I kind of, I, 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 I load on the front end, prepare people properly. They're already, they already have the first month payment and, you know, they're, they, they already have that in their mind. So it's not like they're buying a house and waiting, you know, oh, I got to get paid, you know, four paychecks before I can collect my first month payment, you know, so yeah, 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 yeah. I have that conversation up front with people. So they're prepared for it because you mm -hmm. never know like what, you know, closing gets delayed, right? Cause you, that, that's, that's the problem. Like, you, can't, you can't, you know, you start doing numbers like when you, the, cause people are so price sensitive, right? Which they should be. Mm -hmm. but then then you have the like the you know like the per diem interest right you know, so if you put your closing at the end of the month the number is going to be less because the per diem is less yeah if you close at the beginning of the month the the, the closing cost will be higher because the per diem will be higher i mean it's just math it's not so what some you know some lenders will do is like they'll put the closing the last day of the month Mm -hmm. so the prepaids looks look smaller so that the closing the loan estimate is as low as possible so that people are shopping them and they're looking and this you know 50 dollars difference between one loan estimate and the other they'll take the low estimate and go with that yeah but then they the pre oh well no but it's you know we, we have to we, we can't close at the end of the month we got to close on the 10th now you mm -hmm. got 21 days of prepaid interest now suddenly your closing costs go up by you know whatever it, you know at 80 dollars a day times 20 something days boom is you know whatever whatever the number is, you know what I mean? It's, ooh, yeah. this is my, oh, well, that's a prepaid because we couldn't close at the end of the month. We're closing here. So that's why. Mm -hmm. um, okay. You know what I mean? It's just, it's, that's how, that's how it works, but just put, put the closing day in the middle of the month and show 15 days either way. And this is an average, this is an estimate. Now, if you move it from the 15th to the 10th, now it's only five days of interest. It's not, you know, 25 oh, days. Week. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Per day. Cause it adds yeah. up. I mean, and you have to look at that type of stuff. So that's that's really how it, if you position the loan properly from the beginning and you set up the expectations properly, people, there's no surprises. I mean, the, the last thing people need is a surprise because it's not like, it, it's a different kind of surprise. Like it's not, you know, you leave the house. Oh, it's not, it's and, a prepared for surprise. Like, yeah. uh, you know, I have this covered um, extra over overestimated then you know, a surprise can come up and I can eat the surprise. It ain't, you know, it's no, like not, as good yeah. as cake. <laughs> and it, I mean, it's, you know, I was going to, the analogy, like, you know, I leave for work in the morning and I see that there's, that their steaks are out, you know, and they're being, you know, my wife's going to make, oh, well, the steaks for dinner, great, you know, and then I go, well, steaks for dinner, and then I'm expecting steak and I come home and it's, I don't know, vegetarian surprise. Yeah. <laughs> what happened to the steaks oh they you know they i took them out but they were frozen so i couldn't make them so i had to you know so you still eat you still have a meal you're not going to go hungry but mm -hmm. you have this expectation of steak and now you got a vegetarian delight right yeah Nothing wrong with it but it's it's not what you're expecting mm -hmm. that's you can live with that type of um change last minute change of situation menu right yeah but, the same scenario you're sitting at the closing table you're expecting five thousand dollars you know you know you're expecting five grand to bring to the closing and you know suddenly it's 10. <laughs> and yeah. you get the cd three days before closing and it's cash to close ten thousand well, what do you mean ten thousand it was five thousand oh well yeah but you know the you can't just whip up five thousand out of out of thin air so mm -hmm. you, you you can't, you know, with the veggie delight, you can still have your meal. You might not be happy about it, but you still have your meal, but you can't just make up five grand out of, or you can't just make up a thousand. If you don't have a thousand and you need a thousand, what are you going to do? Well, yeah. Because you, you need a thousand. A thousand is a thousand. You need, it's a real yeah. number. Yeah, and exactly. That's, and that's people's lives and that's people's livelihood. And, and, and that creates, you know, that stress, but there's no need for that. Like there's, that's totally situations that, you know, you you can with the right with the right preparation uh, uh uh a transaction can go really smooth and there's no sense of working with a professional that you're not going to listen to i mean it's insane it's like if you go to the surgeon doctor i need you to you know like my knee replace doctor i need you to replace my knee without an x-ray without looking at it and then the doctor looks at the x-ray says okay you need to do this this and that well, no, i'm not going to do that just you know just, just do it 
Just, yeah, just fix me up. The doctor's going to say, you're crazy. It doesn't work that way. But mm-hmm. people expect the largest financial decision in their lifetimes to work that same way. Yeah. Like they expect, oh, no, I don't want that. Or, you know, I'll do this. Or I'll send the papers later. Mm-hmm. No, it doesn't work that way. You're, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're buying, you know, like I'll, there's so much misconception. Like I'll have a, you know, a couple, right? One has 700, one has 600 credit. Mm-hmm. Boom. Here's the score. Here's the, here's the rate, right? You got to use the lowest of the two scores. Absolutely. Well, why? That's not fair. But well, why? I'm like, well, so think about it. Like, think about the situation. This is how I break it down to people, right? Yeah, we still. You're you're, you're you're the you're the lender. I'm going to ask you to lend me three hundred thousand dollars so I can buy a house. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell you where I work. And I don't and, know you. Yeah, you don't know me. Never. My wife and I work, and I have a set of seven hundred score, and my wife has a five hundred score, and you don't know me, and you want to lend me three. I'm asking you for three hundred thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. You're going to look at my documents. You're going to look at my wife's documents because we're both paying for the loan. You see my score at 700. You see my wife's score at 600. How does that make you feel? What's that going to? Oh, well, you know, the 600 is going to make me nervous. I'm like, well, exactly. That's the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the way a bank gets nervous is they charge you more interest. And that makes their nervousness go away because they, they're making money. And that's mm-hmm. how it works. And, and, and when you explain it to people, oh, right, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, that, you know, I get it. But there's a lot of things that, you know, people are just, they don't have all the information. So it's, well, no, I don't want to do that. Or I'm not going to do that. Or, or, or the, the uh, beyond me, like they have debts or they have things that they don't disclose. They have a property, mm-hmm. you know, they own a property in, you know, another state. And it's going to come up. You, know, you can't kind of hide those things. Those are not, but somehow people think that they can hide that. Yeah. Uh, go figure, you know, but. <laughs> there is there is unfortunately there's more bad information than good information out there when it comes to closing costs so people now are prepared to and they're just looking at this figure and looking at this number and they they just get caught up on the number mm-hmm. and they're just they're looking at the number and they just caught up at the number and they don't understand you know they're just so worried about getting overcharged did you experience a lot of um a lot of surprises on dealing on the builder side of things. Surprises in what sense? As far as like, you know, people were told this amount for closing costs and then at the closing table, it may have been different or it was more than you can't, they you, you can't do that. Yeah. It, 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 that cannot happen. It's, it's, it's or, a- or before the closing table, before the closing table, when they get their disclosure, have they seen a, an amount that was different from their original but even if, even if it's, it's i mean it still cannot happen like there's no you can't really you can't do that you can't just even if it's before the closing you just can't come up with a new you know suddenly two points that were not there before mm-hmm. like, you, you, you just you, you can't do that so there's really no i mean there's not there's not enough room these days for that to happen correct yeah the threshold is so small that that's actually what the problem is that the threshold is so small and it's the way they enforce it is so tight you know that you know, a, a, you know, a, a seventy-five dollar fee. You know, like, for example, every LE that that you know that we generate has a two hundred dollar appraisal rush fee in the loan estimate. Mm, okay, just in case it's needed to be ordered, like rush. Because if you need a rush and you don't order two hundred dollar fee, and everybody knows about the fee and it's a valid fee and it's a real fee and we need the rush because we need to close and everything's valid if that doesn't get disclosed the lender eats the fee eats the 200 dollar fee mm, makes sense it's not that the lender's trying to it's going to charge the borrower 200 and pocket 200 for the fee that's it that's a, that used to be i used to i used to call that the not paying attention fee yeah yeah <laughs> those were in there back in the day again it was the wild wild west you mm-hmm. had a processing fee you had an application fee you had an underwriting fee you had a not paying attention fee like those were all fees that got added they called junk fees that's what they used to be called mm-hmm. you know because they were junk but they were extra revenue for for the lenders that they charge people money I mean, you write processing fee 395 and then you write underneath you know underwriting fee 795 mm-hmm. well that's 1100 that's 1200 bar you know and then application fee 500 bucks you know you add all those up it's two grand real you know real quick before yeah. you even you know go any further and th- those those junk fees so those were a lot were removed you know like va has very strict rules on those type of fees what can be charged to the bar and whatnot so, so that veterans don't get don't get taken advantage of 
Yeah. That everybody yeah. should be the same way. There shouldn't be like any these extra fees. But back in the day that they, they were they charged those. But now there's really no room for that. You can't you it's got a, it's a it's a it's called a change of circumstance. Mm -hmm. So the new loan estimate goes out when there's a valid a valid change of circumstance. And yeah. oh, I'm charging you two points is not a valid change of circumstance. Is you know, borrower score, borrower had a late payment, borrower score went down from 740 to 620, and now there's a rate adjustment and the rate is now whatever and you know it, it was it was i don't know it was six and a half i'm, I'm mm -hmm. making things up right now with the new score the addition you know with the adjustment the rate's seven seven point two yeah now the dti is too high they don't now they no longer qualify mm -hmm. the credit so now they have to buy the rate back down to six and a half to be able to qualify so now they need two points to buy the rate down that's a valid change of circumstance you know yeah. what i mean that's the only way it can happen. So there's there's really no 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 such thing as oh, here's a new charge that we didn't know about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it just it doesn't really it, it's not there. Like it it doesn't happen. But no to, to 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 prevent that from happening, there is a lot of additional stuff that goes behind the scenes that you know the borrower or the the agent, the real estate agent, don't necessarily see. Yeah. yeah just to make sure that now when you only have one closing that's easy easy but when you have a simultaneous or the the the, the buyers that you're dealing with is also selling their home well no but not, not only that not not only that okay the, the one transaction then mm -hmm. you got all the other transactions that the title company has and you got all the other transactions that the lender has and you oh, got I, okay you're talking about managing multiple transactions Oh yeah, yeah. In time and the same closing, the stress that comes, you know, that's what I mean. Like behind the scenes, you just you get the CD. All right, let's close. You know, I'm ready to close. You know, there's a, a lot of stuff that has to go. Then title has to grab it, and they got to. I mean, there's just paperwork. It, it can be fairly simple to do, but just just a lot of data, a lot of paperwork, a lot of stuff mm -hmm. that you need. You know, and then, and and you're when, and you're busy. You have a lot of closings. It's not just title can't just. Oh yeah, let's close it. Let's close it too. Oh no, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm 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 running late. There's traffic. Let, let, let's move it to two thirty. No, no, because there's other people waiting, and it's just it's a messy closing, is, especially at the end of the month. Oh yeah, that's when yeah. they're trying to jam pack all of the transactions in. To get one one thing I'll say on time that's very different: builder versus non-builder. End of month and end of quarter. Forget about it. It's mm -hmm. it's insane. Especially on the quarter. And house. Well, because the numbers that they're trying to keep, they're trying to meet, right? Especially public companies, right? They got data and they for you know forecasts and things they got to meet and things and they you know and it's get it off their books. Sometimes it comes, sometimes it comes to like it comes, comes down to the closing, like one closing makes a difference whether they make the numbers or not. Mm -hmm. So it's like all hands on deck, like you know. That's why they have those wild incentives when they have a home that was under contract the buyer fell through and then now they have the house the inventory I mean, it, it, it's not it's not even it's not even i mean yes but the but i'm talking Some about cases. Be, Some beyond cases. the the incentives it's really the the just the numbers trying to meet quarters trying to meet you know the motivation one, behind it i had one you know that it was a combination of trying to get the the numbers but it wasn't so much for the numbers for the quarter that they had to meet because they ended up at the beginning they did need the number to make the quarter mm -hmm. at the beginning of the day on that day. And this is New Year's Eve, right? Mm -hmm. So December 31st, right? It's the last day of the year. It's the last day of the quarter, right? At the beginning of the day, that transaction was needed to meet the numbers that they needed to meet, mm -hmm. right? At 4.30 in the afternoon, when, when, thing, when we finally got the clear to close on New Year's Eve, Mm -hmm. it was it, it had it was no longer about the, the 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 number being needed to be met it was already met it was about the buyer because they were here they were in a hotel it was new year's eve it was it's it just a complicated thing right but you're trying mm -hmm. to close a deal on new year's eve at 4 30 in the afternoon i mean think about think about that like just <laughs> you know what i mean like new and that's what that happened to me like i was new year's eve i was like at 4 30 in the afternoon i'm like out doing some like getting some stuff that i needed like last you know Evening. family was here and bye bye on new year's eve and i'm on the way in trying to talk into the process and trying to you know in closing trying to get this thing out 
Yeah. And they did close. The truth of the matter is that they, they walked out of that closing like at 7.30 at night on New Year's Eve. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty cool. Well, but it's insane and the pressure and the stuff. And of all, course. You know what I mean, it's, of a, course. It's, it's just insane. But you know, people were happy and luckily we were able to do it. And then when you think about it, New Year's Day is just another day. Well, but but it's <laughs> it, it, it was whatever New Year's Eve that day was like was like a Thursday and then the Friday and then you had the weekend and it just mm -hmm. these poor people were like in a hotel all weekend and yeah, from out yeah. of state because they were buying the house for the kids. I mean, it was just a family situation. Like you know, they're trying to you know, and then, like I said at the beginning of the day, it was it was really about you got to get this done. Like we need this. Like it's all hands on deck. We got to get this thing closed. You got to get this thing closed. So mm -hmm. definitely, closing process is it, it can be very stressful. But it can also be very smooth. Yeah, absolutely. But then, and then you have a that goes back to how how uh, buyers have their ducks in a row. Yes, but I was just about to say, like you can have you can have the buyer have all the ducks in a row. You can have the lender have all the ducks in a row. You can have the real estate agent have all the ducks in a row. You can have everything done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get to the end, and the title company does not have the ducks in a row, and that whole thing goes up in smoke. And that, oh, whole, yeah. that whole transaction just, you know, yeah, crumbled before you. Like the whole true. process and the whole experience and the whole thing just sort of crumbles before your eyes. And mm -hmm. it's an unexpected, you know, nightmare that happens. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, at the end of the day, it does, it's, it is essentially for corners that got to be covered is is the 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 principles in the transaction the real estate agents or agents if they're representing both sides the lender if there's financing involved and then the title company for sure um a lot of moving pieces yeah before we wrap up is massachusetts a title state or an attorney state attorney attorney so well, what what was that difference? Um, Ooh, that was a shot. Like, guy yeah, when I first came to Florida and I started figuring out the whole time, that was like, that was like, whoa, what is this? I wasn't used to that. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's just a, it's it's very different. Do you feel like it's easier here dealing with a title company versus an attorney? Yes. Okay. Yes. In what ways? Uh, my personal experience, right? Like the attorneys that it, it, it becomes, it's like everything, right? It just becomes a, it becomes because the volume, you got the volume, you got, you're busy, you're trying to close, you got so many moving parts. Well, a, a matter of management. It, it becomes, so one thing that's popular up there, it used to be, I don't know now, obviously I haven't done a loan in Massachusetts in a year, so I don't know if that's changed, but back before it was, uh, I mean, the last time I was in two, two, 2016, right is when i i moved here in the beginning of 2017 so 2016 is like the last time i originated in mass um what happens a lot there is the this the closing attorney right represents mm -hmm. the lender mm -hmm. that's kind of how i was i was there right so the closing attorney is really there for the like really representing not representing but it's kind of, it's just the, the lender part, making sure all the kind of stuff is in place, right? Mm -hmm. And then what happens a lot is uh, the, the real estate agents try to, you know, they have their transaction sort of team and they have attorneys that they work with that if the attorney does the closing, mm -hmm. they'll review the PNS for free for the buyer. Mm -hmm. So they'll act as the buyer's attorney as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but they'll and they'll 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 review the purchase and sale and charge a lower fee to you know again quote unquote represent the buyer yeah. simultaneously so they they make the money from the closing they charge the closing fee they make the money from the title and then the, they charge the buyer extra for the so you get into the into the situation where it becomes a selling point to the for the agents mm -hmm. to you know my attorney will look at your pns for free right mm -hmm. so that, again it's all free and it's all added value and all these things so they they add that to the value so then then, then you come to the transaction and then the expectation from the agent is you got to use my you got to use my, my, guy. my yeah exactly and so that, that's usually how it works you know mm -hmm. i i don't you know i didn't really in my case didn't really work that way i don't you know Oh, here's yeah. my, here's, this is my attorney. I'm like, oh, that's great, but 
he's not the bank's attorney. His th this is the attorney that's doing the closing. Mm -hmm. So that creates well, then now the new attorney, now the buyer want you know. So there's a lot of there's a lot of that happening in you know happen, you know, with because of the closing attorneys and and the there was a lot of you know a lot of that manipulation you know listing agents kind of. You know, mm -hmm. then, then, then you got in a situation like here, right? Like right now, like the, you know, when when inventory's tight, right? And this, you know, if you live in a small enough neighborhood, this is real. Like this is very real. At least it was at that time, right? So small yeah. few listings, right? And, and there's a couple of top players who who get all the listings of the you know the agents in that town, right? So mm -hmm. I, had, I had one of them, such agents one time. It's like you know. Uh, you know they had an offer. They, they were going to accept an offer from somebody who I pre-approved. They, you know, call me up to hey, just checking this buy. You do due diligence, this and that. You know, I don't, I don't give, to, I don't answer any personal questions. I did you check the credit? Yes. What's this credit score? Can't tell you that. You know, do they make enough money? Yes, they make enough money to qualify. How much they make? Can't tell you that. They have a lot of debt. Can't tell you that. Like you know, what I mean, that's kind of the conversation how it is. So she's yeah. interviewing me to try to figure out if she should accept the offer or not. And then the fact like, who's your closing attorney? Uh, We'll see who, who does it. Well, no, my my closing attorney is this. Well, great, that's your closing attorney, but I don't, you know, you don't pick the closing attorney. I do. Um, yeah. <laughs> so there's some, some you know, this head yeah, because, but if you're if you're not if you're a new LO doesn't have as much experience, you can get caught up in that game.